Oh, they're going to have to break rules of council. Well, I got it. Okay. Meeting in order, folks. Welcome all of you folks to council members administration. Our deputy fire chief, citizens, and those of you on YouTube, whatever we're on. Welcome to the nice council meeting. Whatever. If we can, let's have a roll call. Right. Yep, Mayor Lowry is absent. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Okowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Six members present. Invitation denial will be by Mr. Cobb. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, give us the guidance to do what's right. Watch over our first responders, our EMS, our fire, and our deputies. Watch over our military and their families. Also help us get through this virus that's out there and the new one that's coming. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And we will do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we adjourn the work session at 7.59. Oh, that should have been 6.59, huh? Let me see there. Well, we can take a motion and I'll fix it and then take a motion to and then, the, yep, and then I'll just fix it on here. Move to amend the minutes from the work session. Okay. German. Second. Second. Okay. Are we good to call it? Vice yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Move to accept as amended. Second. Okay. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Those are accepted 6 0. And we need a motion then for the minutes of the regular session on 8 16. Move to accept. Second. Mr. Grimm and Hagen. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Oh, we're both on. Regular session oh. minutes? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those are accepted 6 0. All right. um, the next one's the communications, and I need you guys to break rules of council. Um, Mrs. Preybacher was able to attend this evening, so we need to add um, interviews for the charter review also. Motion to break rules of council for the charter review and park correct. Second. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Motion to break rules of council and add those to the agenda. It passes 6-0. Do we need a motion on that? Second. 
No, we're good now. So you guys can. Yep. All right. Parks and Recreation Board applicants. We've got Lynn Saxon sitting in the back. Anybody have any wanting to work or wishes or questions for Lynn? You know who runs this organization, right? Do you feel comfortable with her? Yes. Yeah. 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 But I don't know if I can tolerate her or not, but I'll try. A few more hours of this? Anybody else? Can I hope so? I'm going to scoot back before she comes up here and, and catch you on you camera. Are. I'm going to scoot back and let her just have her thing. I'm going to have to. <laughs> if I remember right, I thought we took a vote to accept her. We did. Right. Other than the formal interview. interview. Yeah. Correct. Do you want another vote? Um, we can, just to make it final for the Parks and Rec piece. That's fine with me. So you need a vote to accept it? Yes. Motion to accept. Second. Second. I have a motion to Mr. Tom. I'm second on Mr. Wardwell to accept the agreement for the Parks and Rec Board. Whatever. <coughs> Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. I really got to think about this. Yes. <laughs> and Councilman Roadwald. Yes. All right. That's a six zero. I got an escape route. Yeah, you have to you have to interview him in person. So I'll reach out tomorrow and find out where we can come. All right, we'll put that on hold. The next time I believe we have is. Uh, can I can I interject for the minute? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, Charlotte is the other member of the park board. Yes. I would say let's put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. And we can go to that. Yeah, and I will reach out for her. What did you say her name was? Charlotte. She didn't join via Zoom because I know we had some people come visit us on Zoom. We did. Remember, we actually broke rules of council to let some people come in. So does anyone recall? I don't recall. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't recall. Now I think about it. Councilwoman Nowakowski, last meeting we were out back and we looked at interviewing has to be in person, right? We looked at the def definitions. Yeah, yeah. Is there anyone else that has been appointed to a council board that has not had a interview in person? So we can just clean it up and, well, we got her coming. We got Mrs. Craybacher tonight. Who else? Because you were formally interviewed, right? Yes. I'm not sure that's her. They've got Looney so that leads forward for your board, right? The, and then they haven't appointed anyone else except the charter. And we're cleaning that up tonight. So I think we're good moving forward. Huh? Okay, gotcha. Is it Looney or Mooney? Mooney. 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 Okay. 
Charlotte's last name is Roos. Christian. <laughs> I knew it's something, Charlotte. That's a pun. I knew it's like, like I don't That's shop cool. there. If anyone's wondering why I had that connection, but clearly it's in my incognito mode. <laughs> No, okay. You said you weren't talking. Well, that's a few miles well. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Is there still a charter review application hanging out there to balance for ADLS? No, I don't ever think you came in. You never came in? Never, never came yeah. in. Okay. What was Charlotte's last name? Christian. Christian. Because I about put Bruce here again. <laughs> well, then I guess we can move on. We've got uh, Pat Freebacher. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and make a motion to accept her on the charter review. Second. that I've been teaching citizenship to and English to for 20 years. And I'd be more than happy to reach out to see if we can find somebody in that community to be on it. Okay, we're ready to go. Thank you. All right. Councilman Eggleston. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. And Councilman Grimm? Yes. Thank you for the six, Except it's 6-0. Thank you, Vice Mayor Cook, uh, members of council, members of public. Um, Department of Forms will be at the September 20th, 2021 meeting. That's Finance, Public <coughs> Service, Planning and Zoning, Fire, EMS, and Police. So it's got a few items under informational. I'll get through real quick. Um, I'll be out of the office September 22nd, 24th at the GFOA annual conference. It's down in Cincinnati. It's a great learning and networking tool. Uh, future bridge group contract. I'll be bringing in more than likely an emergency ordinance to council at the next meeting. To uh, kind of, we uh, we have a lot of little agreements with the bridge group. We're just trying to take all those little agreements away and make one big agreement, uh, and also to account for the additional stuff we're going to do for our liability insurance uh, and moving forward with that because the municipalities are getting hat. So uh, next week, next council meeting, I have one there for you. It'll be a contract, probably not to exceed around 62 a year. Right now, over the course of the year, we pay bridge group around 50 to 49. So we're not seeing too much of an increase. I am padding it a little bit, just in case we have any um, unforeseen events. We don't have to go back to council, um, but we, are, we just want to streamline that, get our uh, IT order in order, and they do a fantastic job that as it is. But as I told some council members out back, our liability insurance renewal this year 
was a vastly different than what it's been in the past in one key area, and that is our IT application. In years past, it has literally been one page, maybe three questions. This year, it was 17 pages long because all these municipalities are getting hacked. So they want to know about our patchwork and all this other stuff that is completely over my head. The bridge group is more than qualified to handle that for us as they have been for years past, but I do want to make it official and just have one contract with them. They treat us very well. Um, uh, moving on, if you no questions on that, our fixed asset valuation and tracking, that's what we have to do to get our clean budget award. I actually just reviewed that proposal last week and signed off on it today. So we're having our initial kickoff meeting tomorrow. As we have more things dated out and a, a timeline I can share with council, I will. Uh, but that would be one more uh, little check off our box we need to do for our audit. Uh, I have attached the la latest county, uh, county EMA uh, update. And this is directly from County Emergency Management. So take a look at that. If you have any questions on it, just either uh, email them or get with me and I will definitely facilitate uh, getting that question answered for you. Um, upcoming legislation for council approval. Uh, I originally want to have these out in September, but a lot of some projects are just are taking slower than, than others. So right now I'll push it back to October and November for both of them. That is a codification update and then uh, the employees generally code section that we need updated as well. So those are just some general housekeeping things that I've noticed in our code that need to be fixed. I'll bring those to council so we can improve that and get them recodified. Um, we've already talked about the COVID and the lobby issue. So that's all I have. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you. We've been talking for some time about cleaning up the uh, uh, ordinances. Yes. Uh, getting rid of outdated ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, the ones that conflict with each other? Sure. Is that what this? No, this is, that the planning board's doing that. They, they do it first and then gets passed on to you guys to clean up the code. So that's still an ongoing process. It's okay. a big project. This, what it is, is, and I got to look at my notes back in the office. I did notice that we've numbered some things wrong through the year in our code. Um, so let's say it's 248.10 when it should have been 08, you know, so the subsequent stuff is kind of messed up. So we're, that's what that, it was just cleaning up some errors that were done on the numbering of that. So it's not exactly the same thing. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Sure. Anybody else have any questions? No further questions for Mr. Bridge. Comments from the members of the public, if you will. We've got something. I think John. Go ahead, John. I'm John Craybacher. I live at 307 North Henry. Uh, and I'm representing tonight the community gardens. Definition of a community garden is a community garden is a single piece of land gardened collectively by a group of people. Community gardens utilize either individual or shared plots on private or public land while producing fruit, vegetables, and other and or plants grown for their attractive appearance. There has been some misconceptions about the community garden and what, we're, what we stand for. And what we stand for is to feed people. That is true. One of the things that has been happening is that people have been coming into the garden and going into other people's plots and taking their vegetables. You know, tomatoes have been just, you know, and or stomping on like um, watermelons or, you know, or cantaloupes and, you know, just, taken things. There's nothing in that definition that says that they have the right to do that. They have the, it, it, it seems like that somebody had put something on Facebook that said that everything is free. Come and get it. And that's not necessarily true. Yes, we do give away an awful lot of uh, uh, vegetables. You know, every Saturday, you know, from the farmer's market, you know, we head on up to the food pantry and give it to the food pantry. Now we give to Mr. Max, uh, and he, does, he gives it out for free. And you know, we're willing to give it out, but there are certain plots that are, 
people work on, they plant, they weed, they, and they take care of them, and that's their plot. There are other plots that we don't have any problem with, that we do, that I take care of, Linda will take care of, and we have a core group of volunteers that also takes care of, that they can also fit. But we would like for people to, when that happens, we want them to come to us so we can show them what they can do, you know, which plots they are. People rent these plots for $25. So it's basically their little part of the world, you know, to take care of. You know, when, when Linda Nokowski and I came together five, six years ago, one of the things we, we both agreed on, we want to feed people. We, there's no reason why people can go hungry. And so that, you know, but that doesn't mean you come and pick. Uh, Bill Cook, he, he has a plot. Doesn't mean you go to Bill Cook's plot and take all of his zucchini. You know, but there are other plots that they can take their zucchini, <laughs> if you understand what I'm trying to say. Another thing came on Facebook that we found out you know, the other day from the farmer's market is that we're selling all of our, that we're selling our vegetables. That it's not really totally free and that, you know, that we're profiting. Well, we have a problem. In our agreement you know, with the city and also with our agreement with the Board of Education, there are certain stipulations on it. One of the biggest stipulations is that we have to have insurance. Insurance is not free. We have a tractor. Yes, we got the tractor with grant money, but we have to maintain that tractor. We have to change the oil. We got to buy diesel fuel, you know, and whatever maintenance. Last year we had way over $2,000 in maintenance on that. So we have, you know, this year, since we've done all this repairs on it, it's running really good <laughs> this year. So the repairs are less. Yes, we do go for grant money. Somebody said, you know, put it out there that we, that we apply for federal grants, that this is taxpayers' money that we're using. Well, yes, we did apply for grants in the, in the beginning. Two people, two organizations gave us grants, Lutheran Saints and Ministry and the Church of the Brother. Those are the two that gave us grant money. The Church of the Brother running was with the Global Food Initiative. And their advice is you have to be self-sustaining. You know, you can't continue to go and apply for grants all the time. It just doesn't work that way. You know, at some point, you're going to hit a brick wall. So that's why we are selling our vegetables, is to, and we also, um, we, we hire a Hispanic man who works part-time for us. So we have to pay him. You know, and so that's why we, we sell our vegetables, in order to be self-sustaining. So we can break away from being grant. It's not to make money. Because people that come with the $5 coupons at the, at the farmer's market, they can want heck of a big, good deal on those $5. Because we don't count, you know. Math is not my thing, <laughs> you know. I add pretty good, you know. So anyway. Uh, we're doing really well this year. You know, probably this is our bumper year. One of the things that, you know, that really always concerns me is that we've had two break-ins into our hoop house. And they don't just lift up the side and go in. They tear a big hole in it. Now we have two windows. You know, a friend of ours came from Nigeria, matter of fact, and he has a sizable farm. He says, put a screen there. He said, I'll help you put a screen there, you know. And so now we got ventilation and, and you know. Um, the other day I chased two teenagers out of the hoop house. Well, I didn't really chase them out. I came in the front door and they went out the back door. I didn't, you know, so I didn't really chase them very hard. And that's okay. The idea of the whole thing is to enjoy. Enjoy nature, come and enjoy nature. Even at Madison. You know, we see all kinds of things happening at Madison, and we see, you know, 
some kind of camaraderie. You know, when the gardeners are out there, we talk garden. You know, yes, you know, most of them are Hispanic. But the problem is people were still in the vegetables there. We lost two gardeners this year. They said, I'll just go in my backyard. So I just want to set the record straight. And that's all I have. If there are any questions. No questions, but I was going to add on. When we started this out, we brought Ohio State Ag Extension in. I appreciate everybody's concern over Ron. It's been a difficult situation with him. Um, I think mean, trust has been around probably as much as I have with him. And Seven Brooklyn. Some days you know what to do, and other days you just don't know what to do next. But I appreciate your all concern, and hopefully you'll get out of this again. Is there any other members of the audience that's got anything? Well, go ahead, Chief. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, this Saturday marks the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, so Saturday morning, the fire department would like anybody that would like to come up to the station. Uh, I mean, we'll probably get started about between 8, 15, 8, 30, uh, and have a little bit of a ceremony and a moment of silence and ring our ceremonial bell, the three sets of three. And we're going to probably try to ring it right at 846. That's the time that the first aircraft hit the first tower. So, and I'm, I'll be posting it uh, either tonight or tomorrow morning on the New Kalau, uh Facebook page that anybody that would like to come up and join us for a moment of silence and bell ring this morning. All right, anybody else in the audience that will? Okay. I just wanted to finish what I was saying. Go ahead. Um, we have two Hispanic families that have gardened with us from the day one, five years ago. And the two of those families produce all of the vegetables that they eat in a year. <coughs> they can it, they freeze it. It's possible. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak a little bit to this issue also. I have, uh, I think this is my second year of being up there at the garden. And I'll be honest with you, it's an experience. Yes, I've lost a little bit of vegetable. Uh, my only concern is somebody has come up to me and said to me, you know, can I have what I need? Uh, I don't think any one of the people that garden up there would have turned anybody down. And matter of fact, uh, I have probably given away more this year than I ever have. Uh, I know all of my neighbors have been well supplied with corn and tomatoes, and I think even some of the council have been able to go up and, and enjoy uh, what I have grown. I will also say about John, that man took a lot of time with him, mm -hmm. both he and Pat. And consequently, it's not a 40-hour job. I won't venture to say how much time he spends up there, but I would say it's probably something over 60, 65 hours, if not more. Um, and it's uh, very enlightening to have a person like John in my path that helps the community out in this aspect. But anyhow, has anybody else got anything to say? All right. If not, there are uh, no committee reports, so I guess we'll go to Mr. Byrne in regards to resolution. Okay. Um, before our first resolution, we need to make a, an amendment to it. We are going to add $20,000 for a new siren. We are going to move $7,500 from both fire and EMS, which totals $15,000, to lands and building. Can I get a motion to move for those amendments? Do I have a motion? Second. Second. Okay. Uh, 
who was the first Eggleston road weld. Those were the voices I heard. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> hey, you had something? You're getting to be like Randy with you and Mr. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think he thought you had a question. Oh, okay. You know, some, some days this job befuddles you, and particularly after we got kicked in the bottom was just a little bit before council meeting. Yeah. Three of the petitions were found to be invalid, mine, Peggy's, and Kathy's. So we're still reeling a little bit from that aspect. But... Go ahead. Okay, so I have my first is Eggleston, the second is Roadwald. We're voting on the amendments. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. And that passes five to zero so now i'll go ahead and read the resolution a resolution adopting a capital improvement program for the city of new carlisle ohio so moved. there you go <laughs> Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. That passes 5-0. Moving on to our ordinances, we have Ordinance 2021-33, an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds over $20,000 and authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a wood chipper. So Linda and Peggy and Linda. Peggy and Linda. Okay. Uh, explanation of this measure would be uh, I have a monetary amount to spend, and it, this particular purchase exceeds that, and it's for a wood chipper. Uh, no, it'll cost no more than $35,000. Are there any comments? I'm sure you good. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. That passes 5 0. We have Ordinance 2021 34, an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2021 01. So moved. Second. Eggleston Grimm? Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, I was going to say, talk loud, I got you. <laughs> uh, explanation of this one, this uh, supplements some of our appropriations to, uh, most of it is for our mayor's court expenses. That was a good thing. Mayor's court expenses. All right. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. That one it passes 5-0. And the last one is read only. Ordinance 2021-36. Introduction tonight, public hearing in action on September 20th. In ordinance establishing a schedule of fines and costs and a bail bond schedule for the city mayor, city's mayor's court. And then... That's it for ordinances. Is there any other business to be brought before this before we go into the Mr. Vice Mayor, I move that we I excuse uh, Mayor Lowry. And motion and a second by Linda. All right. <laughs> motion by Dale, second by Linda. <laughs> That's from both the work session and the regular session. Okay. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Accepted 5 0. Mm -hmm. 
Vice Mayor, Acting Mayor, there is no executive session. I didn't see it on there. So if that's what we're going to executive session for, it's a mistake. We're excusing Cobb still. Well, I know, but he said it earlier. Okay. Oh, I'm, I interrupted. Sorry. Not the sound. <laughs> we are or we are not? No, I did not mean to have that on there. Okay. For the executive no session. executive session. Okay, let's wrap it up. Okay. Um, let's finish vote on Cobb. Well, I heard him say that. I'm like, what? What's going on? What, what happened? Councilman Rodel. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Now do we need to break the rules of council to take that off? Take that off the agenda. Um, we, no, we've never done that before. We just don't have it. Did you get it right? I think so. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Motion to adjourn, accepted 5 0. I got real nervous when he said we're going to go before executive.